Hey, yeah. Hope you're well. Um, I've just come back to my park. It's slightly more winter, uh, wintry now. Uh, to answer a question someone's just asked me on how I would help younger children, say below ten, if you like, or how I am helping, or what works for me anyway. So just to recap on the other videos that I've done, uh, just remind you that I'm on the autistic spectrum. And I'm a very happy adult. I've had a bit of a tricky childhood. What I'm essentially doing is sharing the the techniques I learned um, to help make myself happy. Uh, then another quick little recap here is what I've explained on the other videos is what it's like for me anyway to be on the autistic spectrum to people who aren't. And this little drawing here, if you remember, the middle circle is me, and then all the way around here, all these circles here with the usual dodgy drawings, are individuals. So what it's like, the best way for someone who's not on the autistic spectrum to feel what it's like is to put yourself in the middle of a circle, have lots of people around the outside of you, and all those people around the outside have got to all talk at the same time for 15 minutes. And you have no ability whatsoever to tell people to be quiet. They can talk as loud and as quiet and as voracious and as silent as they like, but they're all going to talk at the same time. Okay? And that can be quite, that ends up being quite overloading person in the middle. And I would actually challenge lots of people to say, can you concentrate if you've got 30 people all talking to you at the same time? Um, and that's what it feels like. And then quite typically how a lot of people, and certainly children on the autistic spectrum, cope with that volume of input is they either tree hug one thought, one voice, yeah? or what they do is they, they turn, all, turn it all into background noise so they don't listen to any of it and it sort of washes over them. Oh yeah, and by the way, when I say an autistic person, a voice could be a leaf, that could be a chair, that could be um, a stick, that could be a person, that could be a teacher, that could be a friend, that could be, yeah, so almost every object in their world creates a voice for them. Okay, but anyway, I'm quickly recapping for too long here, but the idea here is that that's what it's like. It's like having 30 people talking to you all at the same time. Which is why it is a real challenge, if you're on the autistic spectrum, to manage your own emotions. Because you can't ground yourself on anything, because everything's moving and changing all the time. So as I've said in the other videos, how I found how I can manage myself was to ground myself on myself. Effectively become emotionally self-reliant to manage my own emotions. Right. But when you're 10, chances of learning that are, uh, you know, zip really. <laughs> anyway, so when a 10-year-old comes running to me, they've lost the plot, so their behaviour has now gone bad. Okay, they're screaming, they're shouting, they can't cope, they've lost control of their emotions. Okay? So they are angry, they are screaming, they are shouting, sometimes they're hitting, sometimes even spitting, but they're angry, they have lost the plot. Okay? So what I do is that I go to them, because they won't come to me because they've lost the plot, I go to them, and what I do is I get them to tell me the bad thought that's in their head. I say, what's wrong? Tell me what's wrong. And I just listen. I say nothing. What I'm trying to do is get them to get the bad out of their head. Okay? At no point do I challenge what they're saying. Even if I know it's completely wrong, I don't challenge it. And nor do I say they are wrong. Okay? Because for them, that emotion at that time is 100% correct. For them. Okay? So, the bad thought out so they don't feel wrong. Okay. What I then do is I then the drawings here create a good thought for them. Something good that's happened to them, something that's good that they want to happen, something that's good that they enjoy. Then I then ask them which one to choose between the bad thought and the good thought. And then most you know young kids will choose the good thought because they want to have a good thought, they don't want to be bad, they want to be good. To, they don't want to feel bad and angry, they want to feel good. Okay? So what happens is, basically, you get the child to download their bad thought, don't challenge, I don't challenge them, and I don't make them wrong. I present the good thought, help them choose. So basically what I'm trying to do is teach them this thought pattern. Bad thought, I've got to choose, I choose a good thought, I put the good thought back in. In other words, they're replacing the bad thought with a good thought, and it's their choice. And if I can teach the, and I have done this to quite a few young kids now, 
um, and, it, and it does seem to, once it beds in and they get the hang of that, what happens is, is when they completely lose the plot because they've got all the voices talking to them, they go start going through that sequence and start self-managing themselves and that's the first step towards a 10 year old or a younger child learning how to manage their own emotions to become emotionally self-reliant. Okay, hopefully that makes sense and uh, have a great day. Thanks a lot.